to know the magnitude of the force on a charge moving in a magnetic field this is the expression what we have see f is equal to q into v into b b is the magnetic field strength or the magnetic induction b okay v is the velocity of the charged particle and q is the magnitude of the charge we will assume that the magnetic field is going in this direction into the board this way so the crosses indicate that the direction of the magnetic field is going into the board okay that means it is perpendicular to the plane of the board fine now the i am taking a charged particle q and i am forcing it to pass through the magnetic field of induction b okay now to know the magnitude is this much q into v into b but to know the direction of the magnetic uh, force on the charged particle moving in this magnetic field we use the right hand rule okay so we place our right hand in the direction of the velocity of the charged particles and then we will curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field okay you know that magnetic field is going into the board this way so i am placing my right hand fingers i am pointing my right hand fingers in the direction of velocity and curling those fingers in the direction of the magnetic field into the board this way okay when i am facing this way now the thumb thumb is stretched like this in the upward direction so this thumb is indicating the direction of the force that means force is in the vertical upward direction imagine the situation is reverse that means instead of going into the board if at all i have the magnetic field coming out of the board generally what we do denote by coming out of the board is a dot with a small circle around it because all the so each dot with circle is representing a magnetic field line see as similarly as here each cross okay so all these dots with uh, surrounding small circles indicate that magnetic field is coming out of the board so direction is perpendicular to the plane of the board but coming out of the board that is opposite to the direction what we have discussed here in this case if at all i assume that a charge q is going with in the same direction with velocity v i wanted to know the direction of the force i use again the right hand rule okay now i point the uh, right hand uh, fingers in the direction of the velocity and now I, i should curl them in the direction of the magnetic field direction of the magnetic field is like this coming out so i cannot curl this way i should curl this way okay i should tilt my hand and then uh, my fingers are in the direction of the velocity and i should curl them in the direction of the magnetic field so they are coming out of the board so it, this is the direction uh, so i should curl them in this direction when i curl them in this direction my thumb is pointing downwards this downward direction will be the direction of the force on them always it is not necessary that the direction of the velocity and direction of the magnetic field both need to be perpendicular okay in these two cases what we have discussed here is that both are perpendicular to each other so one is the direction of the velocity of the charged particle and there is the direction of the magnetic field so these two directions are perpendicular to each other here it may be possible that there is some angle between the two so magnetic field direction is this way not exactly into the board as uh, perpendicular to the board but making some angle okay but into the board like this okay then in that case what should i consider the velocity i should consider the component of the magnetic field in this direction okay that will become b sin theta so whatever the component of the magnetic field uh, perpendicular to this v we will consider that then the magnitude of the force will become q v b sin theta here theta is the angle between the direction of the velocity of the charged particle and the direction of the magnetic field so we don't have anything to do with q over here okay in case theta is equal to 90 degrees then sin 90 degrees is equal to 1 that is what we have discussed the two cases earlier in case the theta is zero that means both are parallel that means the magnetic field is coming out of the board over here velocity of the charged particle is also coming in 
the charged particle is also coming in the same direction okay or else if the charged particle is going in the direction uh, into the board whereas the magnetic field is coming out of the board in such a case theta is equal to 180 if both are coming in the same direction the angle between them is zero if both are going in the opposite directions that means the charged particle is coming out of the board whereas the magnetic field is going into the board in such a case the theta angle is 180 degrees for both the cases sin 0 as well as sin 180 degrees both are equal to 0 in such a case then the force will become 0 okay so this indicates that whatever the force is there the force between the direction of the velocity when force on a charged particle going in a magnetic field is equal is given by the expression f is equal to qvb sin theta where theta is the direction between the direction of the velocity as well as direction of the magnetic field okay now when we know the direction of the magnetic uh, uh, force on a charged conductor charged particle when it is entering into a magnetic field so let us see what in what direction does it move and how does it affect its more type of motion over there what's happening is i am considering a magnetic field uniform magnetic field crosses indicate the direction of the magnetic field into the board i am having a charged particle q and it is i am throwing that into the magnetic field the strength of the magnetic field is b okay in in this direction now the force is q v b definitely okay now in what direction it does it move when we to know the direction of the motion of the charged particle we need to know the direction of the force initially it was thrown in the horizontal direction now we need to know the direction of the force so according to the right hand rule so we are facing the uh, all the fingers of the right hand in the direction of the velocity and now curling them in the direction of the magnetic field as they are into the board so we curl them this way when we curl them this way the thumb is pointing in this direction so the charge particle the force is acting this way so as soon as it is entering a force acts in this direction of this magnitude the directions the between the velocity and the magnetic field both are perpendicular like this so sin theta is equal to sin 90 that is one okay so there is no sign term written over there that is the reason okay now when there is a force directed perpendicular to the direction of velocity what happens does it continue to move this way definitely not so it will try to take change its path whenever it is trying to change always the force is perpendicular to the velocity so what will happen now if the velocity is in this direction again the force is appearing in this direction so now because of this force the velocity of the particle charged particle continuously changes whenever the velocity the magnitude is not changing i am talking about direction direction of the velocity of the particle continuously changes because of this continuous change it will not go in the straight path it will follow a circular path okay now when it is going in a circular path let us assume this is a circle okay i am bit poor in drawing so let us say this is the center of the circular path now and from this center i will take radius r whenever a charged particle is moving in a circular path there is one type of force acting on it we will call it as a centripetal force centripetal means directed towards the center okay directed towards the center centripetal towards the center so this force is always directed towards the center because of which it, the charged particle is moving in a circular path. This centripetal force is given by the force on the charged particle because of the magnetic field. Okay. So the expression for the centripetal force is given by the expression mv square by r. V is the magnitude of the velocity with which it is rotating now. And r is the radius of the circular path. These two are equal. Now from equating these two, we will be able to calculate what will be the radius or what will be the velocity like this. 
So let us assume that equating this to mv square by r is equal to q into v into b. I can cancel out this one. Okay. And I will be able to get what is the velocity for this. Or r is equal to r is equal to mv by qb. Okay. This is the radius of the circular path. I will be able to calculate. Instead of that, if I wanted to calculate what is the velocity, okay, I'll be, be uh, now it is going in a circular path, okay, radius, radius is r. Now this is being a circular motion, it is a periodic motion. If I wanted to know what is its time period, okay, it, if it is making one complete rotation like this, if it is making one complete rotation like this, then whatever the time it takes for one complete rotation, that will be taken as the time period. So how do we get the time period? It is nothing but the total distance traveled by the velocity. Magnitude of the velocity. So total circumference is nothing but 2 pi r divided by velocity. Now I know what is r from this expression. I can substitute for r in this expression. So I will get this as t is equal to 2 pi by v into instead of r I can write mv by qb so which gives us 2 pi m by qb so that means if i know the mass of the charged particle if i know the strength of the magnetic field applied over there then even without calculating what is the velocity of the charged particle i'll be able to calculate what is the time period of its rotation when it is going in a circular path Okay, I'll also be able to find out what is the radius of the circular path with which the charged particle is moving in a circular, so in a magnetic field. Okay, now we have seen a situation where a charged particle is moving in a magnetic field, an external magnetic field which is applied. We are considering it to be uniform. Okay, in case instead of a charged particle, we'll consider a conductor which is having, which is passing some current through it. Okay. So when it is placed in a magnetic field, external magnetic field, what could be the effect? Let us see it.